Hello, this is Stephen, webmaster for PetGroomer.com, and I have another fireside chat here. We're going to be talking primarily to career seekers today about proven career paths into the pet grooming industry. Most people who are at the career level gaining information about this uh, industry just don't realize the flexibility of the careers that we have and this is a wonderful aspect uh, to the pet industry there no, I don't know how many industries that are out there that have quite so many ways to do what you love which would in this case be pet grooming some people think well don't you just go work in one of those stores and that's what groomers are no no we have a lot of possibilities uh, grooming when it first started out we didn't have almost well, even back in 1961 when we started, no, we started a store. We were one of the first stores in an upscale area, to use that term, in California. A uh, very progressive um, area, the Silicon Valley. But were there a lot of other groomers in commercial locations? Absolutely not. We, we sort of one saw... Uh, us and we saw them and all of a sudden it was happening because for the 40s and the 50s groomers were quite often if anything in a kennel or or yeah but just kennels with breeding i mean that's where a lot of us were at least on the west coast we weren't out there in these independent locations uh, on main street at all and now it's exponentially increased into the numbers of different ways that you can be a pet groomer so let's take a quick look at some of the proven career paths. This means that we know we have plenty of groomers in any of these career paths, and you can easily verify that. Just even come to the Groomer Talk message board, and we have groomers in every type of uh, business situation or employment situation that I'll mention here. If you're going to be employed, and quite often those people that are self-employed today they do have some time uh, that they put in uh, as an employed groomer not always but it is a it's definitely a, a way to get your feet wet before you open a business and to you know there's a lot to learn by working with the other groomers around how to which will eventually hopefully lead you to even be a better employer I you know, I don't know how everyone feels about me saying this, but, you know, there's a lot of groomers who really aren't really good at employing. Um, I could go into the mindset of that a lot, you know. Um, you know, any I find anyone in the pet trade, if we're not careful, uh, we can bark out everything and we can treat other people, even, even our customers sometimes in some places, as if they're dogs. You know, and we have to be very careful. It's just a trait of the whole pet industry at times. Not with everybody, but enough of them out there uh, if you take a look at that. But to not get going too far astray here, employment. Today it would be very common for you to look to be employed in a grooming shop or a salon. This may be a mom and pop place, or it may be a large superstore, or something in between. You may end up working in a grooming department, which is within a boarding facility, a veterinarian clinic, a pet daycare facility, and again, retail pet stores, small and large. So your environment's going to be different than what, what you just may think, that it's just salons. Nope. There's employment in all of those areas. Now, sometimes you may want to just look at self-employment as the as your goal. In fact, 70% on average of all groomers we surveyed over the years said at some point they would like to be self-employed. I don't think well, we don't have exact numbers to compare and follow them. Did they all get there? But that just gives you a good uh, idea of the mindset that the majority of pet groomers do want to be self-employed at some point in their career. So if you're going to be self-employed, well, you could be the employer and owner in a grooming shop or salon in a commercial location. Many groomers today 
that really has been booming in the 90s and it boomed as, as the as we changed into the new century what mobile grooming that's a fun idea it really fits the lifestyles uh, and working and working lifestyles for some people and so that's a unique I mean how much more different can you get than you know if when I was an office worker I was an office worker <laughs> you know not a mobile office worker isn't it neat that grooming offers that something so different that you can be on the road with your grooming out there well what's also be, you know, become quite popular in the last few years is home-based grooming businesses They're, they've been around for a while but we're seeing more and more of them where and this doesn't mean grooming in the owner's home we're gonna call that house call or in the home of pet owners grooming so there's two types of home related it could be your personal home which could any be anything from a ranch in a rural area or semi rural area and where there's not regulated out of business and prohibited it could be even in the suburbs and even in some towns it's still legal in a home to do uh, pet grooming they may limit the amount but yes you could do that potentially that's part of the study you'll have to do but there are groomers that groom out of their home very common here in the state I'm in Washington State and once you get semi-rural and you go out you start seeing a lot of them up in in the Northwest uh, there's the house call again that's where you don't have a mobile van you'll probably use your own car you may even use a taxi cab or the subway in New York City and you'll literally groom in the high-rise homes of the people and that so we're, we're generally that term is house call um, or in-home grooming then there's also a way to be self-employed where you just rent a table and that table may be in a shop or salon you're so you are self-employed that would make you when done right and legal an independent contractor but you're working but you're not an employee you're literally self-employed yet inside of a pet care business then there's a route where you that you can take that a little bit further where you rent or lease not a table but a whole de department you know I've helped many students who were in grooming school and while they were in grooming school I helped them to write career plans and trained them how to go talk to veterinarians and mom-and-pop stores which uh, retail mom-and-pop type pet shops and how to go convince these people to uh, that it's a good idea to uh, build out a department for them if you're ever at petgroomer.com and you have an interest how to write such a proposal you can uh, look um, at go to www.petgroomer.com and go to the home page looked up best career pro I'm sorry best career report and there will be a section in there on the next generation you'll also see that in the career section of petgroomer.com it will say the next generation and these were actual students I worked with and you get to read their actual proposals that they would um, uh, present to get the attention of an owner and say how about building out a department for me in your business that can work out very well it's usually done in boarding facilities veterinarian clinics pet daycare facilities sometimes a self-service pet wash and mom-and-pop independently owned retail stores the self serves just to get back there most self-serves have now come around to understand that they really need to offer some level of full service for many reasons maybe I have one pet that's appropriate and easy for me to bathe and to dry that pet it doesn't need styling but then they may own a Bichon and they just aren't going to be able to use a self-serve pet wash to wash that pet but what about all the styling that goes with that breed so most self-service today 
have added on. I have quite a few self-service uh, pet washes as management consultation clients. And the big issue was always how to now, Steve, okay, now we're ready to hire that full service because we're getting hit with every day. Well, that's great, but I need full service. What does this mean? There's a lot of career paths for you to consider. All of these, if you're listening to this uh, on the Pet Groomer CD, we created a CD-ROM. You may hear this audio library on the Pet Groomer CD. Included on that CD is the Career Start Report. You'll want to read that. That list that I just went over for you to consider is on that report. Or you can go online to www.petgroomer.com and look up the Career Report on the home page of PetGroomer.com. So what was the overall theme, though, was we have a lot of potential. It, in fact, it may be a bit confusing for you. Here you are with facing, wow, I've got a, I, th I think I'm going to do my passion. I'm going to become a groomer, but wow, and I've got to figure out which educational path. But oh my gosh. I didn't realize, I, I just assumed, you know, I've always worked for somebody else, so I figured I'm going to work for myself, uh, uh, maybe now. And that's a, that's a whole new enlightening thing, and wow, maybe I'm going to work for someone. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've always worked for other people. I don't think I want the extra work of being self-employed. But wow, I didn't realize there were so many choices of where to go look for it. But isn't that wonderful? Isn't this remarkable about pet grooming that you have? all of these potentials and they're all proven and possible for you to do so it's wonderful and not, not uh, probably as recognized as what a benefit for how many careers uh, of interest can offer you so much to choose from now we've got to deal with finding your way through the grooming education maze of opportunities You've got to get education, right? I don't think anyone has any problem with that. You're not going to be a good groomer if you just buy a book, and you need to buy the best books. There, there shouldn't be a groomer, with, a, of course, without a reference library of the best how-to grooming business books. There's no question about it. Go buy your books. It's fun to, to start learning every day. You know, it's like, Gosh, when I had some even jobs outside of grooming for a while, my lunch hour, if I was still interested in grooming, you know, it was fun to read the trade magazines and, and whatever. That's a sign that you're going to be good in this field. You know, it's like, I think today I'm going to flip over and learn the breed standards for um, a low chin or something. I mean, that should be the, the kind of passion that you have. And so you want those, although there's online, you need to start collecting your books right away. Even before you go to school, start collecting your books. You may find it that the schools will give you some of these books, but that's that's not always. Uh, you can always sell it. In the meantime, are you jazzed about reading your, your grooming education books? Good. Go get them. Start learning them now. There's a tremendous amount to learn as a groomer. It's often misunderstood. It's, it's no less complicated, if not more complicated, than doing hairstyling for people. You've got more types of hairs and furs and, and and things that you do to a pet that, you know, we don't do to humans when we do their hair. We don't touch a lot of their parts of the body that you're going to touch when you touch a pet and groom. I mean, there's just a lot to grooming. It's often misunderstood. The, and the more things you do, that means the more there is to learn. So start your maze with building a foundation of a professional groomer's library. Now, a lot of uh, opinion is out there about how to get your grooming education. I have to come from a career counselor viewpoint and agree with the most, and yet I have to understand the limitations of what's possible for you perhaps listening to this to become a groomer so I can tell you the best way to learn is still to go to the best school 
all hands on name school best it is but we know that that isn't always possible and what makes the best school and whatever you're gonna have to do some homework there we have a lot that you can study on this CD as well as at if you go to petgroomer.com and go to the buyer's guide there's a pink tab on almost every page is buyer's guide you can get a list of all the schools and go start examining all their websites uh, because schooling has been around the longest uh, where you buy your education of course there has been apprenticeship now for example my father stepfather was an expert groomer he could even groom for some of the big name shows that he was a commercial groomer you know there is show grooming there's this show grooming but there's also commercial grooming and most of the grooming still done for the average American family day is not show grooming they're doing commercial grooming and we like to vary the, the the two so that you understand that and use those two different terms a lot of groomers today are not show groomers if they want to learn show grooming they will but you're you're gonna you have to know how to do commercial grooming so most grooming schools will give you a good foundation to later become a, a show groomer but that's going to take more experience and expertise so apprenticeship was one way into this industry that existed when there were very few schools in fact we still do have some states that don't have one grooming school that's an obstacle we have to come to terms with that for someone to tell you there's only one way into the industry and you've got to you have to go to a school and if you can't go to a school we'll just forget it right off that's I don't like when I hear that kind of stuff because that that doesn't make any sense you're killing someone's passion and dreams yes they have to be realistic about what training they're getting but that doesn't mean you throw out the baby with the bathwater kind of thing that we you just don't go that route with people and that's uh, that's not being uh, a career counselor on my part so I'm going to say if you can go to a school in part or fully as your start that's great there are schools in most states but never think that every school is the same and boy is that that should be in all capital letters and because why remember probably to our benefit we're not a vocationally licensed profession which means that every school owner gets to decide their curriculum see when you vocationally license normally you will state they this is what's supposed to be taught they have to have a basis of knowing uh, the product that's used and the and the ingredients and what they are and so many hours will be on learning skin and coat types and so many hours will be learning on scissoring techniques and etc it's broken down well there is nothing there is nothing like that that exists not in the educational side so every so even when the when a school owner goes to the state because they often and almost every state but not every state but perhaps I believe it's 48 states require schools to be state licensed don't think that that means that the state is endorsing the grooming curricula they are not uh, but the school the state doesn't know anything about how to groom but it will view and say well it looks like this person has been in the industry for X amount of years and consistently in this case grooming that many years and um, so it looks like they're likely to be qualified that's about the only qualification there's certain financial qualifications and insurance qualifications and deposits and licenses but it's the state is not validating that anyone is is a is a great teacher they don't know that they don't you can't expect your government to 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 do that that's gonna fall on to you to study who your teachers are who their backgrounds are 
talk with uh, satisfied students, hopefully, and get some referrals to those type of students, etc. You're going to have to do that groundwork, and you need to do it quite seriously because you don't want to go to school and then find out and have buyer's remorse, and that, that can happen. Okay? Don't go there. You, if Just know that no one's validating. Now, there are a few schools that optionally get accreditation. Accreditation is not state licensing. And, in fact, sometimes you can't even apply to be accredited school until you've been in operation as a state licensed school for at least a couple years, and then you can start that process. And then you have to ask yourself, yes, but who's the agency that is accrediting? And is, you know, because maybe one uh, uh, organization that can accredit a school program knows a little bit about grooming, whereas other, otherwise it could be an organization well known to all groomers who has a, has a tough system of accrediting, and that school is not only state licensed but accredited on top of that. I can just tell you those owners have gone through a lot of work, a lot of optional work uh, to get to that basis. Okay, so what are we talking about here? You're going to do a lot of study. But most people will say, oh, but Steve, I, I got to go. I've got to go to the one in my neighborhood. That's, I mean, that's got to be within driving distance. And I say, but there's not even a school within 50 miles in your area. What do you mean? Aren't there schools all over? Aren't there 20 in Chicago, 15 in New York, and 10 in San Francisco, and probably 30, right, in L.A.? No, there's not even not even a, a percentage, of, a big percentage of that. I mean, we're talking a, a large state could have as little as two, three, or four schools. And then we have to look at what, what's quality of those schools. So it's an obstacle. Everyone who isn't a, a resident in an area around where there's a, a great school just goes, wow, I never realized it was like this. And so they say, well, gee, I, I don't know what I can do. Well, we've got some solutions coming up for that. But let's back up just here for a moment and still say, They'll, they'll want to know about apprenticeships. Well, apprenticeships are not that common anymore. They were more common when we started in the 60s and the 70s and even before that, 40s and 50s. They were out there. But a lot of us in the industry got sort of a, um, a sour taste in our mouth when we hear that word. And it, it goes from past experience with offering apprenticeships. It's pretty simple. The apprentice comes. They learn from you. They may stay six months or year as an employee slash apprentice. And then they up and quit. They got their training. Remember I said that about 70% of, of you know, all groomers want to be self-employed, so they just want to learn, and they have this ulterior motive. Oh, yeah, I'm going to stay, and I want to learn, and I'll give you lots of notice and whatever. Well, some do. Plenty don't. And most of us who have been in the industry 10, 20, 30 years and whatever we can tell you lots of stories where the apprentice got training, stayed a little bit of time, and left, and that was all. And it, you know, and some got so uh, dissatisfied with that route that they go, I just stayed a one-person business, or I'm one person, and I have a bather or two, and that's all I do. I give up. I'm, you know, because there's such a huge chronic shortage that could be probably filled by everyone commonly offering apprenticeships. But you get over this whole thing of, well, this is a lot of work to train somebody, and to make sure they're learning all the different breeds and all this. And what are they going to do? Stay with me nine months, and they're out the door. And you know what? Some of them even don't even have the class to open up two miles away, five miles away, ten miles away, or further. No, they are, they're going to open up two blocks down and open up a competitive business with you. It's outrageous. It happens all the time. It's happening today still. So we do have some apprenticeships out there. It is still possible, but 
don't think that it's common and that it would be because it does make perfect sense it just doesn't work out for most owners that just doesn't based on the history and we've been in the industry almost what 50 years now in 2011 and uh, through all those 50 years every year I hear stories about apprenticeships that end up flat and the owner is well now I'm looking for another one or maybe just giving up and not going through that kind of training that's partially why in our book from problems to profits all the way back in the 60s we created the first assistant groomer in the United States is we put in on the job training which was like an apprenticeship but we did it on the job and you learned steadily as we could and this business grew and that worked very well for us so there are some places that will just plain have on the job training and that might be a good route for you got to see if you have a place that that's uh, doing that uh, we did it quite well we almost never I mean we're talking one of the world's largest businesses ever and we never almost never I should say almost never put out a help wanted ad we we had a steady supply of pet bathers and chose which one of those that we knew were appropriate and had the passion to become a, a full charge, you know, a complete, what we would call a stylist today or a full charge groomer. And we would select from them and bring them up. And in two or three years, we had a person and we, they were actually staying with us eight, nine, ten years, which is jaw dropping to most people today that would offer an apprenticeship and do these on the job. They don't know how to operate quite that kind of system to do that so you can look at the biggest job marketplace which is online at www.petgroomer.com go to the classified ads and look through there and see what's being offered you can learn a lot just by reading those classified ads and you will see some apprenticeships but it, many career seekers think there's probably a lot of them there aren't but go in there's some probably there even today but you'll get a, a good idea of what's really out there today by taking a look at those classified ads. Now the superstores with that have grooming departments, they will have potentially ways to get your education. Not everybody that wants to is accepted into the educational programs. Uh, some may say that they have in return that you're going to since they're going to pay for your schooling where they send you out to a school that you're obligated if you don't stay a certain length of term to work with them and all I have no problem with that that concept if I've paid for your education uh, I, I do uh, expect so much uh, work from you and, or to be uh, over a prorated basis to be reimbursed or something like that I'm not going to say which if I like their plan or whatever. I'm just saying I would set something up like that. I did set things up like that as a consultant with some veterinarians who invested $8,000 in school tuition for somebody. You bet they better stay a certain length of time or whatever. Why should, uh, what kind of ego would say that, you know, I, I, I stayed six months and I don't have to pay someone 8000 to, to stay with me they they work for so um, it's again some of those scenarios out there are happening every day even now and um, that's one way of getting your education is paid for from a provider like a school now we started to say there are other ways and there are and w what was created was home study and now that brings up a lot of controversy I'm not going to hide anything here it it has been controversial but let's take it apart a little bit and look at the details so if we're going to be rather critical or we're going to be positive at least, least agree and look at all aspects of this before we come to a conclusion quite some excellent champion groomers even today are working in the home study developing home study into viable and why since the 1960s when we entered there has been a chronic shortage of pet groomers in America we have a 
uh, we're going through a, a very severe recession now, and yet I still know that any day of the of the week, in the worst economic year, there's still two or three thousand grooming jobs easily that are available in the United States. What's sad about this is that why we can't fill positions more? Why is there such a large amount of positions open? And it's been around since the 1960s. Well, part of it is the pet population explosion has started and the percentage of ownership of dogs that benefit from or require a professional grooming has continued to grow. Pet grooming has been validated as a as a common need of the American family where they have these kind of pets or just a plain desire, but it's been validated as a profession. We even see, again, to uh, the consumer who's driving down the street now, it wasn't like this before, but they can see a $3 million building at, that's been invested in by a company and, and it's offering pet product and all, but it's also saying grooming. Oh, other people are using her. In fact, Joe America is, and Jane America, look, they're using grooming. I mean, grooming has become a viable profession more than ever today. So what we haven't answered was finding a way to, as an industry, fill our positions no one's really working on that except a few souls. I mean, I'm one of them. Well, the reason I originally did PetGroomer.com was for the career seekers. We wrote a, a really from problems to profits. What our original intent was for today's groomers. My mother saw the weakest point was the business side. There were no, hardly any books on that. And so I, she did well. Why don't I share some of that with the industry? and give back to the industry that way. And then more schools have come around. So there are people in industry today still responding and they're turning their salons into uh, schools. But then again, not everybody can go to school for their reason. Now, so home studies come around, but now some of the, some of the top known schools are offering part home study and now we have even one offering all on-site training at the school environment or a complete home study environment but partly because we have new technology today that we can work with uh, so it'll get down to the controversy will be but it's got to be hands-on to really learn one thing to remember home study and grooming before we criticize and say that it, it won't work because it's got to be hands-on. No, it is hands-on home study. When I go to a grooming school, the pets will be provided for me to groom. That's a nice convenience. The person who is doing home study has to find the pets to groom. But they're also probably saving a lot of money in the education. And some groomers will still say, but if it, it home study won't work, whatever. It's because they've got to do hands-on. And we're saying it is partially hands-on or it can be as hard. In fact, it may be, I may do as a, if I, maybe there's a school program for 600 hours, but I'm going to stretch my home study program to be out many more hours than that. And I'm going to get many more pets in during that time period. And so what we're facing, the challenges, is not to say one is better than the other and this and that. But it's that we've got to find other ways to get the education started in people rather than saying, if you can't go to school, don't even enter this industry. Because we've pretty much have thrown out that it's going to be almost impossible to find apprenticeship. But it's not impossible. But it's close enough to it to generally say... It's not a solution today. So you've got to have to go out and find someone willing to train you in 
some place that does maybe a superstore and but you can't count on that they're not going to do it for everybody they know what's who's more likely to succeed in 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 that type of program so what we've got to do is to be realistic but to say that home study is for a viable option for those that cannot go to a school or cannot find someone to send them a school or can accept the 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 agreement of of you send me to school then I've got to do this and that they just don't want to come to any kind of agreement with that kind of thing and I think that's fine because you know what even if you go to a school the learning process never stops the learning process should go on and on we have uh, people like Jody Murphy people like uh, Jay Scruggs and we have people like Melissa Verplank and like Sue and there's others I mean I'm, I'm just saying a few names here who are you know these are professional groomers they're champion groomers and they're they've responded in the last few years with incredible DVD instruction it's just another now new tool with what technology is allowing us to do and so those have made a dramatic impact even on groomers with 10 20 years experience who are you know why because some people have gone to school and kind of winged it after school and never really done a lot to get a better education there are thousands of groomers unfortunately that won't even go to uh, continuing education and they are out there there's I, we're talking 10 20 30 thousand of, that never go to the trade shows never go to the seminars well more are going today than ever that tide is changing but they're still out there and then that makes you wonder then hmm how good could they be those type to apprentice under so isn't that true not every apprenticeship is great either not every school is great either not every home study program is as great as the other see what that we were we don't have any set standards as to how to train a pet groomer because we're not vocational licensed or doesn't have to be vocational licensing but as an industry among ourselves we've never really sat down and decided this is the minimum education that someone has oh to be a pet groomer and if you don't do that then how does anyone know who's going to do a school or a home study even or even an apprenticeship know well this is the minimum I've got to train so see everyone's using their best opinion as based on their experience as to what a training program is for a pet groomer so today I'm happy that there are home study packages and that they've gotten even the attention of some of our champion groomers to then add their product into a home study program or just to say every groomer every groomer I don't care if you got 10 years how would you like to see um, a how-to on this by someone who's won all these uh, ribbons and awards for grooming this or that breed or that mixed breed and all this the wonderful thing to learn I mean does a doctor not keep reading all his medical journals to stay up to date whoever heard that groomers go to the school for just X amount of hours and then stop learning and just groom and maybe spend a little bit of time here and there each year learning more there are thousands of groomers with that attitude they get by and it's okay and you know what they're not wrong they're not wrong but sometimes we get opinions that come from them and others that there's only one educational route and that's it and da, 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 and you're dashing the dreams of people so even in face of some of some that would criticize home study I'm I see it as as part of the future and that's why a couple of top name schools have at least part home study because we have to recognize that we've got thousands of job openings 
that are not being filled. And we have thousands and thousands and thousands of people who do have a passion that just can't get into uh, a school because we haven't made schools available to them. Not everyone can leave their family and go three states over, two states over, and go away even in the same state for eight weeks and 12 weeks. It's just not, and in today's economy, it doesn't that's certainly not, not looking positive for those people as well. And getting financial aid has become uh, tough in some places, and yet some schools have done a fabulous job of keeping that alive. So you will see schools that don't have any, and yet some do, and that's to, to the credit of those institutions that have found a way to keep aid available. So is it sounding like I said, like it's a maze of opportunities? It is a maze. The one thing is, to come back here is, you're never finished learning. It is wonderful to be able to go to a great school that has a, a reasonable ratio of instructors to students. And that school has a reputation of great instructors and owner and participation in the industry. But it's not realistic to say that everyone can do that. And now, unfortunately, we know that re apprenticeships are... Well, they're only as good as those training. So they, they range anywhere from great to not so great. But they're, they're being offered less and less because of the reputation that goes along with the whole apprenticeship process with many owners. So we cannot close the door on home study. And there are even people in home study who are finishing themselves off and getting certified after a couple years of continuing education. So it's a great way to get started. It's absolutely a great way to find out, do you really have an interest in this as a career? Why not take a home study program? Find the pets. Yes, you're going to have to create your hands-on assignments. But if you aren't certain, look for the package that appeals to you. Get your feet wet and work with them. Some of these places, you know, I actually, by the way, I w wanted to be, oh, take art courses and, you know, being back when I was a kid, they were doing cutbacks and we lost our art department in high school. And I took the famous artist correspondence course. And what was pretty neat is famous artists were actually um, evaluating. I would do a painting and I would ship the painting off back, uh, it was somewhere in the Northeast. And it would come back, and I still have some of my correcting. You should see some of the names. It was pretty great. I, I even have a, that was a Norman Rockwell was a part, and Norman Rockwell was evaluating. Uh, pretty neat system. But it got me started with art, see? So what we don't like as groomers is to hear is a, the naive, naive, uh, this naive point of view that... And that's what I think when it, when something gets a little bit slammed by by another groomer is to is to think that if you do this program, and it can even be a school, and then I'm a groomer, oh I'm a groomer I did X amount of hours here, or I did this program and I'm I'm it I'm now no that's that someone has has not given you a, a great picture. Of, of what it is to be a groomer. It takes a few years to become a great groomer. And that doesn't mean you go to school for great all those years. You don't. You learn enough to become a commercial groomer. So that's what some of the balk and some of the rejection that you might hear and say there's only one route to go with this and that's the way that you do it and you should go to this place. Well, that's probably true. That is a good recommendation. But never be so naive as to say because you've done this program, um, whether it's on-site or whether it's home study, and that you're complete. Just be honest and accurate with the amount of training and then to realize I know I've got a lot more, and I've got to learn re learn my productivity skills. I've got to improve the my, my if you might even know if I've got to still improve my terrier group training. I know I, I'm weak uh, there, whatever. 
So be realistic and present it. Don't present yourself as just because you've gotten a certificate of completion that there isn't a lot more to learn. Every groomer knows we're learning and I we love it, Groomer Talk. Um, the attitude that we're always learning. That's what makes it kind of fun that we're always learning. So it's going to be the way you present your education. There are viable ways to get started with home study. There's viable ways to get started with an on-site school. There are viable ways to get started with an apprenticeship where you can find one. But we use the word started. Invest in all the DVDs and grooming books, the professional ones that you can, and watch them again and again. And what's so nice is, you know, sometimes you don't realize that you've gone through school, whatever, and maybe you got to do a Portuguese water dog, and now you're going off, and you're in your career, and suddenly the, you haven't done a Portuguese water dog in a long time, and now you got to do one. Oh, you're going to love bringing out those books and the pictures and the DVD that shows you how to do one, and you've got it. So I, I am eternally grateful for what's happened in the last five years with the plethora of wonderful DVDs that they weren't there just a few years ago that are now available. It's changing everything. And home study is an answer to the industry to get more people started. But but it's a, it's so it's that step because we have thousands of job openings and we're affecting pets and pet owners that need more groomers out there that can't get some in some areas they just can't get them we've got to start addressing that needs so it isn't a matter of judging the education as the as as the methodology of how it's it's being taught it's a start get people started in their in their careers and then keep learning and keep learning and keep learning and once you've got your training get your job go to the seminars get the dvds you'll you'll make it that way be realistic about what you know and what you don't know so you're going to have to figure out what you can do what can you do can you go to a school if you can't don't stop there. Look into what you can start learning in your home. And remember the home study still is hands-on. Don't that, that don't mis, misunderstand that. Read about all the various programs. They're only getting better. They're quite popular already actually. There is more competition now as as new programs are arriving because we all know in the industry we've got to at least have home study in there or at least you're going to do some home study and then go to school on site for a shorter period of time there's this bit of maze you're going to have to work out but it's going to probably be a mix of home study on site school or being taught by an employer whether it's apprenticeship or being taught by the employer the benefit of, of the school is you're learning more hands-on all the time getting and not having to find the pets to groom. So you're getting your education in a tighter, initial education, in a tighter period of time quickly, more quickly. Generally, that's true. Through an employer, through apprenticeship, it could take much longer. But again, you may not be paying a penny. In fact, you're even making a some sort of wage while you're even being an apprentice. Okay, so th this is that where the maze goes, and it will usually is based on what your finances, your finances, and your your ability to go and travel to a school if you need to go out of state. Can you do that? Can so it's time and it's money. It's time and money, and uh, the easy access availability. But everyone has access to home study. That's why that gap is being filled in. And then you go from there with the wonderful two words, continuing education, no matter which route you go through. There's no excuse not for continuing education, yet it will probably be good for you, even if you want to be self-employed, to go out and notice how many groomers today still don't care about continuing education. 
Uh, some may pay lip service. You're not going to find that true at PetGroomer.com. And it's if they're there at Groomer Talk, it's because they like to learn. Or they're career seekers that are, are learning. But it's the, they're there to learn. But there's plenty of groomers out there that just got this initial education, enough to get by. It's a comfort zone. And they stop learning there. And that that's that that's sadder than anything else because there are brilliant uh, brilliant programs out there today and these DVDs and books that are out there today that have changed the whole basis of education in our in our industry and some of the shows that are you know we have more shows than ever right now it's amazing these things should be some are they're busy but should be much busier because thousands of groomers are still not supporting that and what a shame who would be so uninspired at one time to be, uh, I should say, inspired at one time to become a groomer and to become so uninspired to keep learning for such a reasonable cost of a price of a DVD to master and perfect? What kind of comfort zone are they in that they don't want to be better? Well, that's their choice. You know, that's the choice. I hope that what you'll do though is to support all the educational side of our industry and invest in everything as you can as you can it just never stop learning to make it through there and you'll choose your way what how to get that education you can read more in the career report on the pet groomer cd-rom that you may be listening to this here or you can go to www.petgroomer.com and click the career report link and we talk a lot more in depth and detail on the various uh, methods of this but realize it's obviously is a maze because but it's it's a bit of a maze in response to you to those of you that just cannot find a way to a school to look at the options and or maybe you can't